Okay, so we are continuing to look at differential equations. And in particular, we are still looking at linear differential equations. Okay, so where did we get to? Okay, here. So we're now at the set of all. So we found that the set of we found that the set of all solutions to a linear homogeneous differential equation forms a subspace of the vector space of functions r to r. But now we have the set of all solutions to a non-homogeneous differential equation does not form a subspace. It is exactly analogous to the case of matrix equations. It is easy to think of an example. It is easy to see that y1 equals sine x is a solution of y dash equals cos x. Yeah. But it's just as easy to see that 2 times y1, which equals 2 sine x, is not. Because what? You differentiate... You differentiate... You sub... Oh, so, so y1 equals sine x is a solution because y1 dash then, if y1 equals sine x, then y1 dash equals cos x. Cool. But 2y1 is not a solution because 2y1 dash equals, now that's 2 sine x dash, which is 2 cos x, which is not equal to cos x. Right? So you do not have 2y1 dash equal to cos x. Okay, so we times the equation, the function by 2, and the result was not another solution. So this shows that, in general, the solution to non-homogeneous differential equation do not form a subspace. Uh, maybe a slightly more general way of seeing that would be to note that if you have, and this is more like what we did for the case of matrix equations, so... Let me take this away. So a more general argument that applies to many more things, but this is, this is a final argument to show that it's not true in general, but a more general argument would be, well, suppose you have, for example, you have Ty1 equals something non-homogeneous, f of x. Okay? Now look at T times alpha y1. Okay, that equals alpha times t of y1, because t is linear. It's a linear differential equation, and that's alpha times f of x. But that's alpha times f of x is not, in general, the same as f of x, of course, unless alpha equals 1. So alpha y1 is not a solution to t of y to f of x. Okay. And it's just, in general, it, it's, you know, it's never going to be a solution to, to it. Okay. Now we have the general solution to a non-homogeneous linear differential equation is the sum of the solutions to the associated homogeneous differential equation and a particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. The general solution is a particular solution plus a homogeneous solution. This result is analogous to the ones we showed earlier for systems of linear equations. Right? We had that when you want to solve a non-homogeneous system of linear equations or a non-homogeneous matrix equation, in other words, like this, the solution was, you found the solution to the homogeneous version, you find one solution to the to the um, to the, to the non-homogeneous thing, and in general, things like that, sums like that, are solutions to the non-homogeneous one. Right. Now the same thing applies to differential equations, not to linear differential equations, because. Consider a linear non-homogeneous differential equation, t of y equals f of x, with two solutions, y1 and y2. The difference between these two solutions solves the associated homogeneous linear equation, since t of y1 minus y2 equals t of y1 minus t of y2, because it's linear, which equals zero. On the other hand, given a solution to the associated homogeneous equation, y0, the sum y1 plus y0 is still a solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. t of y1 plus y0 equals t of y1 plus t of y0 equals fx. Together, this shows that any solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation can be written as a sum of a solution to the associated homogeneous differential equation and a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation, as something like this. General solution can be particular solution plus homogeneous solution. So, in other words, to solve a differential equation, so just like with matrix equations, we're solving ax equals b. To solve an equation t of y equals f of x, what you need to, all you need to do is find just one solution to the equation, okay, to the differential equation, then 
every other solution will be of the form that particular solution plus a homogeneous solution, some homogeneous solution. So it's really the homogeneous bit changing that changes the general solution to something else. Okay. Now we have an example. Check that e to the x satisfies y dash dash plus y equals e to e to the x. So this is a linear differential equation because we have first derivative times by something, which is just in this case just one, and plus there's no happens to be no first derivative, so the first derivative is like times by zero, and then second derivative times by just one in this case. On the right hand side we have a function just of x, not of y. So check that e to the x satisfies this, and thus write down the general solution to this equation. Okay, so we're going to need, we're going to need, we're going to check that this is the particular solution to this. So we're just going to sub it in, right? So if if y to the p, if we if the function if y is e to the x, then y dash dash is, is also e to the x, of course. So sub it in, you get e to the x plus e to the x, which equals two e to the x. So yes, it satisfies. Now you want to find all the other solutions. You just need to find the homogeneous solutions. So you change the 2e to the x to a 0, and you have y dash dash plus y equals 0. Okay? But that's solved by something of the form y naught equals a cos x plus b sine x. Okay? You can check it if you want. Um, you can more, maybe more easily find it by writing this equation as y dash dash equals minus y. So you're saying, what is the function? What functions, when you take, when you take the second derivative are equal to the minus the first derivative. Of course, you know that the derivative of sine x is cos x, and the derivative of cos x is minus sine x, and the derivative of minus sine x is minus cos x. So it's sine and cos which do that, but then also, sine, so sine and cos have that property, but then any linear combination of them, because the set of solutions to the homogeneous linear equation is, as we've shown, is a subspace. So you take any linear combination of those two things, okay? And then you add it to the particular solution, and now you have a general solution to the non-homogeneous equation. The only other issue is, how do we know that this is all the solutions to the homogeneous equation? Okay, so when we were doing the same kind of thing with matrix equations, right, we would solve this equation with Gauss reduction, right? And by doing that, we would find every solution. We would be confident that we found every possible x that solved that. But here, we've just sort of thought about this for a bit, or even just verified that this is a solution. How do we know that, there's, that these are the only solutions? So we're going to see this later with the Ronsky and stuff, but I remember, the, remember it was said earlier that it was said earlier that the dimension of the subspace of solutions for a linear homogeneous differential equation is the same as the order of the equation. It's the same as the highest derivative. So here we have the second derivative. So the dimension of the solution space for the homogeneous equation is 2. Okay, so that means dimension is 2. That means a basis for it will have two vectors in it. Okay, so it means that if you find two linearly independent vectors that both solve the equation, the homogeneous equation, then that can be a basis. And you, okay, and the solutions are just linear combinations of those basis vectors. And you, so you only need two of these basis vectors, two linearly independent vectors. Where vector, of course, means function in this case, because the vector space is a function space, a space of functions. Now, cos x and sine x are linearly independent vectors, linearly independent functions. Why? Because one way of saying, seeing it is that cos x is not a multiple of sine x, is it? Cos x is not equal to a scalar times sine x. Another way of seeing it is to say that if you have a cos x plus b sine x equals 0, the only solution to that is a equals 0, b equals 0. Okay. At any rate, so sort of the procedure for solving then this, this differential equation is somehow figure out one solution to the equation. Okay. So in this case, you figure e to the x. Then it's write down the homogeneous version of the equation, okay, and find any two 
to, because it's second order, find any two linearly independent solutions. And then just write the, you know, the final, all solutions must be of the form that particular solution you found plus a multiple of cos x plus a multiple of sin x. You know, a multiple, a linear combination of the two solutions to the homogeneous equation you found. Okay.